Hey guys, Loco here, bringing you another LCS review. I guess it's not another, it's my first LCS review of summer. We have Cloud9 vs. FlyQuest. This was the debut match for both teams in Summer Split. It was the first match of LCS. And these are the top teams, at least for Cloud9, they're top three, and FlyQuest is supposed to be good, so let's see it. Draven Recondin. So already, Something really surprising that C9 is doing is they're not controlling the number of OPs. Oh, where did the overlay go? Hello? Can I have the overlay back, please? What? Hello? Rito? What? Come on. Hello? Riot, where's the overlay? Okay, we're just looking at the coach. We're looking at the coach again. Are we gonna get the overlay back? Rito? Alright, so they just do draft and then okay, we skip into the draft. Okay, so let's just skip into the draft because apparently that's what we're doing today. So uh, let's talk about something special that C9 did. One thing that they did was they didn't control the amount of OPs. They left everything open, right? So they left, they banned Draven, uh, Rakan, and Rek'Sai, and they didn't ban any OP. And FlyQuest is actually the one banning OP. They banned Jace, they banned Yumi. And then they also ban Sona to prevent Sona Taric. And Cloud9 actually opens with Galio first pick. So why Cloud9 opens with Galio first pick is the OP picks that are left open, um, two, two of the core OP picks are Akali and Irelia. And Akali and Irelia are both mobile assassin type champions that are very reliant on their mobility. And Galio does well into both of them. And because there's so many OPs up, you can actually first pick the support and draft the OPs that are left. That's why um, C9 played the draft in this way. Um, and that's why they first picked Galio. Really interesting way to go about draft. It's something that caught FlyQuest off guard. And also, one thing that's kind of shocking for me is they gave them Aatrox, Silas, which I would say are the one of the best two OPs along with Rise. I would say Rise, Aatrox, Silas are fucking fucking OP. Like, Irelia, Akali, Jace is like OP. Rise, Aatrox, Silas is like, holy fucking shit, these champions are fucking OP. So, yeah, um... I'm kind of shocked by what FlyQuest picked, and they also picked Vi too. Like we talked about it a little bit on face check, I felt like Vi was really off as a pick, and yeah, Cloud9 overall just such a fucking dangerous comp. Jesus Christ, it's they got so many things that they wanted, and they made their comp so good. Where FlyQuest is going with jungles like Vi. So I was really, really shocked. Centaurian tweeted that his pick was bad. Yeah, I mean, of course it's it's fucking terrible. Uh, I'm not sure Thedger was open, but there's just so many better things than you can pick Vi. Like Vi is just god awful. Vi rhymes with Y. Yeah, Vi also rhymes with. Yeah, it, it rhymes with Vi. Why? 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 You coach Centaurian? I coach Centaurian to know that pick was fucking bad. My boy Centaurin. And also, coaching Centaurin was a fucking honor. He's a top 3 jungler in North America. Alright, if you talk about win condition for both teams, um, both teams can play 1-3-1 one, one or team fight. So they actually have very flexible comps. Aatrox, Silas can go into 1-3-1, one, one. Ryze, Irelia can go into 1-3-1, one, one, but they both have really good engage tools. And Vi, Vi is a really good engage, Varus is a really great engage. And they also have very good team fighting champions like Galio, like Braum, like Zaya. So both teams are going to be looking to do... They're very flexible and they can do a lot of things. But I've already watched this VOD before. And also, it's fucking North America. Don't fucking kid yourself. They're going to team fight again and again and again. It's North America. Let's not kid ourselves. So this matchup, Rise versus Silas. It's not the greatest for Silas, but it's doable in mid lane because the lane is so short. When you have to play this matchup in top lane, it is a fucking hell. But them getting to play this here is a lot easier. Like in mid lane, it is not that bad for Silas comparatively, but in top lane, it is fucking bad.
This is the thing, you can see Svenskeren match, matching Centaurin really well. He went to match him on Wraith, and then now he's matching him on Scuttle. Like earlier on, Vi is extremely weak, and she can't really fight, so she has to kind of run away from the enemy jungle. And Svenskeren doing a really good job of pressuring the Vi. Centaurin recovering really nicely though. He dodged Svenskeren, got the Scuttle on the other side, and then taking Krugs on the other side. Like. I mean, Centaurian's fucking good. He knows he has the weaker jungler, so he knows he has to play around Svenskeren and what Svenskeren wants to do. But this does put him behind on tempo. You can see Svenskeren returning to map much faster than Centaurian. Now, there's going to be a lot of action happening when both junglers are level 6. Hecarim level 6, Vi level 6 upgrades your ganks in so many better ways, so until they actually hit level 6, they're going to be playing it safe. Viper able to get a solo kill on Licorice, both burning flash. Um, it's a solo kill and it's also a first blood, so very worth for um, Viper. Nifki with the early level 6, and also Rides doesn't gain anything with ult, so his level 6 doesn't matter as much. This solo kill actually matters so much though, that second solo kill. I, I was fucking shocked because I always thought of Licorice to be one of the better players, so watching him get solo killed over and over again by Viper is, yeah, not what I've been expecting. We can play this slower, but Viper just plays this. That's the first kill. Oh, and then the second one. I actually want to see that from Viper's point of view. I actually have the tools too. 755, let's go. So, let's go to this one. Select stream. Let's go to Viper. Yeah, from I want to see from his perspective how he got that kill. Because that's not an easy kill at all. And Aatrox just gave him space where he didn't need to. Alright, let's see. Does he get 5 stacks first? One, two, three stacks, four stacks. Oh, he puts like the positioning of the blade was so good. He's reading that licorice will walk down. Great, well, you need to tell people with Twitch Prime logos to sub. Oh, I do. I will do that later in the VOD review. But yeah, this was so good from Viper. Like reading where Aatrox will go and placing his blade further ahead. And then I'm pretty sure he dashes into it. Aatrox dashes into it able to catch him, lands the stun, lands the ult, and also, I'm not sure if you guys are catching it, but Viper's kiting down, right? Well, why he's doing that is Aatrox's Q is going right here, and by kiting down, you can deny Aatrox being able to use Q, so Viper just did an excellent job of landing the stun and also dodging the Qs really well by kiting into turret and playing away from the Q, so just really extremely well played from Viper, nothing else to say. Beautiful. Alright, let's go back to the normal view. Also, this is Menchi. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. You've been here for two months. Now, important for C9 to make sure top side doesn't bleed anymore. Aatrox is ahead because he picked up kills, like he picked up the kill on rides when he was roaming here. So Aatrox isn't too far behind, but it's really important to make sure Irelia really doesn't get out of control. Rava Shock, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub, man. Oof, this catch. Oh my god, that was brutal. When the fuck did that even happen? Centaurian's on jungle. He used Q, so he has no mobility. Like, you're a fucking... 
um, what is it? You're a Vi that used your Q. You have no mobility afterwards, so yeah, you just get chased down. Ugh, that's a bad spot to be in. Now it's really up to C9, because the jungle tempo is actually so bad, and they have so much control bot lane, because it's Varus versus Zaya. Turtle's behind so much CS. Also, a lot of people were talking about how badly FlyQuest bottom was playing, Fly, uh, JJ and Turtle. It's not how badly they were playing. It's Varus is better than Zaya in lane, and Galio has kill potential on Braum, so this lane is just... It's such a bad matchup. Like, I don't understand FlyQuest draft. They have losing bottom and they give up incredibly strong solos and they also picked a really shitty jungle to go with it. Vine stands for vacuum, a vacuum in the jungle with Rakan banned. Yeah, Rakan was banned. You'll never see pro teams pick Zaya and not take Rakan if Rakan is open. And you'll see pro teams actively try to ban away Rakan. Yeah, they took Zaya first round without taking Rakan. That's what happened. When, Vi when Viper did get solo kills, they had a good chance of winning, but Licorice being able to kill Ryze on the roam, and then them collapsing and killing Centaurin on the roam kills a lot of their tempo. When your jungle and mid falls behind, like you're not able to activate your top laner as much. And then you can see C9 taking away Herald, taking away Dragon, they're just in control of the game. For FlyQuest, they need to make side lane plays. They need to use the Vi and Ryze to make side lane plays on Irelia. If the laning just goes on, they're gonna start losing stuff boss side. C9 is going to use Herald. Silas is scaling nicely. Aatrox is scaling nicely. When it gets to the team fight phase, like Silas, Aatrox, these champions are fucking monsters. These champions are fucking god tier team fighters. Like, you do not want to face a Silas and Aatrox in team fight. Like, you don't have a fucking shot at it. Just C9 draft is so much fucking better. Their play is good. Their play is better than FlyQuest 2, but also the draft makes team fight. Unfucking playable. The team fights are going to be unfucking playable for FlyQuest. Getting that Herald Shop, taking the early mid turret. Roaming up top side. Like, this is what I mean though. Even though Irelia got the kills on Aatrox, just due to the amount of support that C9 can provide to Licorice and how they can provide it first and be up in tempo, FlyQuest is always in a defending position. So what they have to do is they have to kind of give up stuff to help out lanes, but they're slowly bleeding and they're not doing anything. Like plays for FlyQuest would be rides roaming to top lane. Like rides and Vi roaming to top lane first and making the play. They need to do it with mid prio and they need to build mid prio with rides and Vi, but they can't even like, so they're locked up in so many ways. Like you can see how timid their vision is and how defensive their vision is. Oof, let's actually let's watch this let's watch this team fight slow down uh, yeah let's watch this team fight a little bit slow down so both teams contesting for dragon this positioning so much better for c9 this is good you have mid control you can always rotate back to mid and push being on this side of the dragon is bad for fly quest let's see what they do 
Okay, Braum used shield. Oh, this is crazy. So, why this is fucking crazy is Licorice can hop over this wall with Aatrox E and then look for a flank angle like this. Or he can even go on this wall and look for a flank angle like this. But he's starting the fight before Licorice can look for the flank angle. So, I really don't like. I know, Sneaky also missed old, but I really don't like this fight start without waiting for Licorice. Who was Sneaky aiming old on? Oh, he was aiming old for Pope there. Wait, where did he use old? He used old before. Oh, I, I even think this fight would be way too early. Even if he hits this one on JJ, like he hits it on JJ and Braum has old to counter. I don't like this fight angle. Like, wait for Licorice to get the flank. Wait for Licorice to come in here. I think C9 is overly forcing the fight when they don't need to. They could have waited. They could have waited for Licorice. Oh my god, that Braum ult can't single out Zazel. Hecarim going in alone. This fight was just so uncoordinated. And they didn't really use their tools at all. Yeah. Wow, oh, uncharacteristically bad play from C9. Oh, this is just uncharacteristically bad. So they have to give up that Inferno due to how terrible they took the fight. And the game is a little bit more even, but you guys will be able to see in future fights, like, the game is not even at all. When you see in the future fights and you see people actually fighting, like, it is not even at all. Oh, this was so decisive from C9. Look from Zazel's. I'll show you guys this from Zazel's point of view. 2111. It's where they kill Brahm. So 2111. Okay, so right here, let's watch from Zazel's point of view. This is so fucking decisive. Just watch him play. Looking for the engage. Looking for the engage. He spots Braum, charges up little right away, goes for it, gets the Braum kill. Rise on the other edge, everyone looking to dive, everyone looking to dive. Make sure he can't exit left, Hecarim tank first, ult follow up. Charging up the taunt, I and mean, he ended up dying, but this is, if you count the Braum kill, and also, the Aatrox won't fucking die. He's recovering 300, 200 per hit. Jesus fucking Christ. This is... FlyQuest not being able to give up a kill and chasing for something they don't need to chase after at all. Oh. It's brutal. Like, after the Braum died and Aatrox was ulting and they're diving you, it was so dumb of FlyQuest to stay there and Turtle staying mid and pushing all the way. Give up top turret and take mid first turret. But instead, they're giving up Baron because they decided to defend top turret for no reason. Why do NA teams even draft 1 3 1 if they always 5v5 anyways? We like to fool ourselves into thinking we can 1 3 1. One three one is about engage, but it's also about tempo. If you're already spread out in a one three one position and you're forcing your one three one, even if the team engages on one side, like you're still taking turrets and you're still applying pressure all over the map.
Diesel flash taunted. Oh my god, he feel good. It's not that he flash taunted. It's the speed that he did it at. Wait, Nifty, what were you doing, buddy? This is one of the problems with Rise versus Silas, though. You get absolutely fucking bonked. Woo! Can we get Paul Balter's point of view on that one? The bonking of the Rise. Rise killing Silas. There it is. Let me get that Eugene point of view. Let's see. Just pushing along. If Silas shows up, starting with EQ, EQ, EWQ. What the fuck? That wasn't even fucking close. What the fuck? <laughs> QE, EQ. Holy shit. That was not even fucking close. Those rise mechanics. I, this is what happens when you're a Silas without MR and you charge into the Rise. Like, Rise makes you disappear. And because he didn't even land. Oh, he's not even Aftershock. Yeah. He's not Aftershock. He's um, Conquer. Wait, but like, it's been scaring coming in, but can't even do anything versus the Rise. This is what happens when Rise is in a side lane. This is what happens when Rise has 40% CDR. Like, you can't fucking touch the guy. That's This is one way that FlyQuest can play it out. Rise in a side lane, it really in a side lane, but whenever it comes to team fight, it's just so good for C9. Oh shit, I kind of want to talk about what they're doing here. Licorice really trying to deny this choke and making sure FlyQuest can't come in here. If you can deny this choke and actually fight on the choke and put a lot of pressure onto them, like it changes the overall outlook of the fight so much. Do you guys see this fucking Aatrox? Just watch Aatrox. Like, look at this flank angle. I'm gonna show you guys this from uh, FlyQuest point of view. Like, why it's so dangerous. So let's watch from Turtle's point of view. So, this is the fight right here. So, watch this fight from Turtle's point of view. Watch this fight from Turtle's point of view. He doesn't know Aatrox is here. He doesn't know Aatrox is here. He knows he's like there. He knows he's there, but not sure exactly where. He kind of knows. He kind of knows. He can come in anytime. He comes in where Turtle doesn't have vision. He's coming in with EQ where Turtle doesn't have vision. And he's ulted. And if Aatrox gets one kill, the fight is fucking over. Aatrox just needs one kill. Vi is dead. Now Aatrox is going to take over the fight. Like he's Aatrox is going to be nearly full HP the whole time. And he still has a res. Okay, he doesn't have full HP, but you see how much he's healing? Like 400, 500 HP per hit. It is so fucking disgusting. That champion, whenever he gets one kill in team fight, like look how much takeover there is. And that's why I was really disappointed why C9 didn't wait for the flank in the first time around. Because when you set up the flank like this, like the champion's fucking disgusting. Why is the screen so zoomed in? When I watch from Turtle's perspective, it shows exactly Turtle's perspective and what he's seeing. So that's the resolution Turtle plays at. Yes, they saw him, but you can't not step forward. That's not the correct decision either. Yeah, they just have to give up the fight. They literally have to give up the fight there just by Aatrox being on the other side. That's how much pressure he puts on as a flanker. Crazy champ. Oh, this flank potential.
I mean, now that they have Baron. So here's the thing though. Remember what I talked about tempo? So Pobelter is on this turret while C9's on this turret, right? So in this case, like tempo is better for C9 and it's worse for FlyQuest. But imagine while Pobelter is on this turret, if FlyQuest or C9 was like the wave was here and the wave was like meeting here, then they have to deal with Pobelter first. So this is why tempo matters so much. And this is why being able to be the first ones on turret and force the enemy team to come to you matters so much. Like Pobelter can't stay. If he tries to base rate C9, C9 is going to take his entire base before Pobelter is on inhibitor. Like Pobelter has to respond to C9 because C9 is first in tempo. Oh, FlyQuest just has to utilize 1-3-1 one, one so much more, but they just kept taking teamfight versus uh, Silas Aatrox. <laughs> They're looking for team fights that they can never win instead of opting into one three one that they have a shot at. Damn, this was a disgusting game from C9. Just a draft and execution into team fight. I do think FlyQuest had a potential at this game. This it, I hated the Vi pick, I hated Zaya Braun pick, but the solo lane picks they got were good enough. If they actually utilized them a little bit better, they had a shot at this. Do you think this game messed with Fly's mental into GGS? I don't know. When you play a game like this, your takeaway should be, we need to play more proactive, but that wasn't their takeaway and they weren't playing more proactive. So I'm not sure what the fuck they wanted out of it. Like, I'm not sure what their takeaway was. So yes, maybe it did mess with their mental, but their takeaway and their mental takeaway from this game is we have to be more proactive as a team and we have to play 1-3-1. I mean, they can't win team fights and they're never gonna have the tempo to like so like look at this state again Pobelter is gonna push here but C9 is way too fast in terms of pushing this so Pobelter is eventually going to have to stop pushing and recall and then come defend this so the tempo advantage and just C9 getting to the fucking wave first and pressuring Pobelter out of side lanes is so good I love watching C9 play. C9 is one of the most macro correct and the most side lane heavy teams in NA. Even though this game has all about team fighting for C9, like it kind of had to be all about team fighting because I mean they have Aatrox, Silas, and they can't split push versus the rise. This game had to be about team fighting. Ooh, oh, this one really interesting to watch from ProView. 3149. So I'll show you guys from this key point of view why this fight was so bad. 31-49. Okay, so let's go back a little. So Niski, he's gonna get spotted out in a little bit. So he gets spotted out. But here's the key thing that happened. He failed his wall jump. He failed his wall jump. So he should be here, and he should be approaching like this. But instead, now he's stuck on this side. Because he failed his wall jump, let's see what he had to do. He failed his wall jump. So now, look, look, look. There's two people taunted. Imagine on these two people taunted. Boom, Bromult goes down. Boom, Violt goes down on Zaya before Zaya can ult. There's just so many things that can happen here while Zaya and Brom are taunted. That can be really good for C9. But because Nifty's not over the wall, he can't actually go in there. So how does he end up approaching this fight? He ends up stealing Violet and then going in on Irelia. And then now he has to, he's forced to burn his Zhonya's early and he's not able to do much. And also he didn't get to use Flash. But level 16 Silas, like you, your ult cooldown is like on five seconds. So you can use multiple ults during a team fight and this key didn't really get to show off what a Silas looks like in a team fight, so he kind of got fucked here. All right, let's watch from everyone's perspective. Oh, imagine he's right here, and then he fucking Bromolts on top of this. That would have been fucking killer. Bromolt and then steal Violet, and then go in, or you can even steal Zaya ult and then live again. 
with Thylith, like it's about cycling through multiple ults, and that's how you carry a team fight as a level 16 Thylith. How do you even miss the wall jump? I tried that wall jump a little bit in custom. It's not a it's not one of the easiest, but it's definitely a wall jump that you could pull off pretty solidly. Sneaky just going in there with licorice to make sure they don't get barren. Oof. Oh, this fight. Just watch. I'll show you guys who's point of view. We should watch this from 34-24. 34-24. This one, we watch from Sven Skaren's point of view. Watch what fucking Sven Skaren did here. Just watch what he did here. Sven Skaren beast mode this team fight. Fight starts right here. Goes in. Fears. And then he's just dealing with the AD carry entirely by himself. Gets the GA. Turtle hasn't got to hit anyone but Sven Skarin. Turtle and JJ were so occupied with Sven. And then Sven ends up, what is it, pressuring the ult out later too. Like, he feared two people and zoned out AD carry entire fight. Fucking beautifully played from Sven Skarin there. It was wrong of FlyQuest to go on Licorice. Because Licorice wasn't going to get one shot. But also just... How Spence Garen messed up the rest of the team was core to C9 winning this fight. And Nifki buying time versus Pobelter. Like, everyone's just split. Like, the Zaya is here, Rise is here, they're not fighting together. Spence Garen and Lick. Spence Garen did such a fucking good job of starting the. Or, Lickerish did a good job of baiting the fight, and Spence Garen just wrecked the fight, like, by getting right in the middle, splitting the team too. You can never take a fight against Aatrox if he gets the reset on his ult. That's exactly right. If you get one kill on Aatrox during a fight, game is fucking over. Fly should have focused Hecarim. No, Fly just can't be in that positioning where they're starting the fight on Aatrox. I mean, overall, the game was already over for FlyQuest. Just how C9 played it was so fucking good from early part. And once they got to team fights, and once FlyQuest stopped split pushing with the rides, the game was over. Once they went into team fight, game was fucking over. Alright, let's go to the analyst desk. I'm gonna skip the interview, but I'm curious about what the analyst desk said. Thank you very much, Avali and Licorice. Colin TL, the second best team in the world. We'll see if his prediction holds true in that very next game. Know how they cut the interview the second he said I hope they talk about how little they split pushed. I just don't uh, understand how FlyQuest didn't split push at all. Slow starters, but I want to talk about this game here between our third and fourth place teams from Spring Split. We talked about, you know, setting up Cloud9. TSM and TL as these titans that the rest of the teams are trying to take down. We heard from Invert himself that he wants to destroy that narrative. It is not predetermined which three teams are going to Worlds. FlyQuest wants to make a case for it. And this was a very, very close game between these two squads. Yeah, I like what I saw too out of the draft. Both teams sticking with a lot of the stuff that we saw become powerful in the MSI meta. You've got Aatrox coming in. He got reworked while we were all away uh, and got a lot different of an ultimate. But everything else, you know, the Silas, the Rise, the Aurelia, all the same. I didn't like the Vi, though. I think that you, you can't you can, you like that. buy against Silas. You just can't do it. He gets way more value out of your ultimate. Niski was a better Vi than Centaur in this game. That's what happens when you pick Vi. Yeah, Vi is just Silas. shitty. He steals your ultimate and does way more shitty. work with it. Lower cooldown as well. Like, what? I think that it's a good pick right now, yes. With the Aftershock, you can be tanky. You can mm -hmm. steal somebody out. But you can't do it against 
uh, uh, Silas. It's just you really have to go somewhere else. That said, the focus of this game was not necessarily around the junglers or even the Vi pick itself. It really was about the two top laners. Again, our rookie of the split from last year in Licorice up against this spring's rookie of the split, Viper. Yeah, good, making good use of pro view right out the gate. Everyone watching the top lane matchup. Viper uh, was really knowledgeable about his trades, knowing he could take this one. Then the flash follow with, you know, still Oof. relatively, you know, close to 100 HP. First blood Licorice, makes it worse. Knowing he'd get that kill, does get executed for it, but he had, a, he had a great game in laning phase, built a CS lead, got all these kills. It was really impressive. And the fact that Licorice was able to... Oh my god, dodging so out all those Qs. Really fucking well played. In lane with no jungle pressure is a testament to me to how good he is. I think... Licorice looked really good this game because he picked eight shocks and went into team fight. But how Viper played early game was so good for Viper. And if FlyQuest played more to one three one, definitely could have been a much much closer game. The player because mm -hmm. able to roam and consistently find Santorin, and then his team fighting was just on another level. And we take a look at the kill participation: eighty five percent. Yeah, that's top lane. Like phenomenal. that is outrageous for a top lane. But you can see exactly what Licorice was talking about in the interview. Didn't necessarily win <laughs> yeah. the lane with that, uh, you know, down 25 CS at 15 minutes. But it really was about the team fights. Yes, both top laners did their job in that, you know, one v one. Please mark our crumbs. Tall dash that FlyQuest had to split push. Please say FlyQuest had to split push. Fucking say it. the initiation tools on their side. Yeah, there's a buy for FlyQuest, but then you also have a Varus ultimate. You have Nisky, you can steal it. You have a Hecarim engage. So a lot of these fights came down to like how well did C9 play them. That one, they blew a bunch of ultimates. Fucking say it. Here in the top side, a very well executed dive. This was really weird out of FlyQuest. I mean, it looks like they are just all walking into the cemetery one by one because there's no chance you can actually survive that dive. Yeah. Turtles still sit in mid at that point. Yeah, but this was a fight that began with Licorice once again being at the front lines, just as we saw in the top one. He found an amazing flank and just walked away with it. Yikes. This is Aatrox to me saying... Please talk about it once again. Now, in Collegiate, it was being permabanned. I think that Aatrox is now... Boop, boop, you got to start first picking this champion. You mentioned mm -hmm, Pro View getting mm -hmm. used. If you're a top winner out there and you want to understand how to play top lane in team fights, that team fight is one to take a look at from Licorice's point of view. And mm -hmm. really intelligent flank over that wall there around Dragon to help set up his team for, a, for an ace and ultimately a Baron and then a push for the win in the following minutes. Yeah, but it still was close even after that. They got the Baron, but then they-, they Two inhibs were down, but they, they lost a couple fights mid lane and, and they actually had to play pretty well to get back to closing it out. So to the earlier point about, you know, the top uh, three getting closed in on, it did feel like FlyQuest was super close to winning this game if they played a little cleaner in some of those mid game fights. I'm gonna just give them the credit that it's day one. Everything goes. It's gonna be scrappy. It's gonna be messy. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. couldn't ask for a better way to kick off the summer split with exactly that. Seeing that the two teams positioned next to each other in the standings at the end of the spring split are really still that close to each other, and it suggests that we're gonna have a really tight race throughout the remainder of our nine weeks here. Up well, next, though, we've got a rematch of the spring final. Wait, did I miss something, or did they not talk about one three one? I feel like they never talked about one three one. Shit. What? Wait. I really feel like they should have criticized the Vi pick more and talked about rides not split pushing a side lane. Jesus. Okay.